Welcome to Set the Captives Free Ministries, providing Christ-centered solutions for the bewildered believer. Well, today we have a very, very special guest. Uh, Laura Maxwell was once deeply involved with New Age spiritualism, but by the power of God has been set free. And now she's a counselor helping those who are still trapped in the occult escape its bondage. She's the founder of an international ministry, A Spiritual Quest, and host of On the Supernatural Radio on Eternal Radio. So, Laura, welcome. Well, thank you, Willie, for having me on your show. It's It's been really a pleasure speaking to you and getting to know you. Yeah, it's been it's been so much fun. Um, the reason for me, that, why this is a special show for all of you listening, um, so Laura has had me on her show twice now and um and you know one of the things that we had talked about on the first episode was that it was going to you know we we prayed that it was going to start like a chain reaction of of people you know of people you know inviting me to be on their show and so on and so forth and you know what what's kind of funny is that you know nobody has actually invited me to be on their show but I've been able to um you know replicate the same structure of of how she does her radio show and be able to do this and have guests on my own show. So, you know, that that was kind of the chain reaction that has uh that has occurred and it's been really, really great. Um Laura, you're actually like the, the you're the fifth the fifth guests I've had on uh on this show so far, which is really cool. Oh, that's lovely and I'm I'm really pleased to hear that. I I do like to encourage other people who um, haven't had a show yet to, to, to get into if that's what God's calling them to do. I just love that chain reaction when it happens. It's it's such an honor to to be involved. Yeah, because it was just like I've I've really I've been wanting to do this for such a long time, and um, as soon as I found out how you how you you go about everything, like the software you use and how you do it through Skype, it's like, huh, interesting. And so you know, I've just like all of a sudden click, just boom. And you know, people like it just it's kind of it just come flooding in. Like all you had to do, like you were kind of the one who, uh, uh, you know, released the floodgates for me. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! I'm really grateful to God for that. That's a blessing. And and I really I really enjoy uh, your posts and your your shows. I don't get to listen to them live, but I do get to listen to them when they go on YouTube. And it's really really interesting stuff um, because I mean I I've been fortunate to not have been caught up in the occult in my uh my my unsaved life you know but i know i know the dangers and i have friends who were trapped in the occult and have been set free by it and it's it's just it's such a powerful thing uh you you definitely have a powerful testimony and and that is actually you know for for those of you listening this is why she's on the show to give uh, to share with you how how god rescued her yeah and and i think you know Willie. What gets me is that people say that to me all the time, you know, a powerful testimony. And it is God did do miracles in my life. But what I really feel is my story is actually a very, very, very common story amongst people. Um, And yet it's not one that you hear a lot of. And yet it's extremely common. And I I would imagine, I think that there are people in every um, town who are experiencing what I did and it just goes um, unnoticed because people tend not to tell other people about these things. It tends to be quite secretive um, when these things are going on. Well, yeah, and, you know, the way, I, the way I see it, that's what makes it powerful is because it's relatable to a lot of people who aren't comfortable talking about it because mm-hmm. they don't know, because people don't talk about it. They don't know that other people have gone through it. So when you, when you stepped, stepped forward and said, this is what happened to me, you know, all of a sudden these people who hear you are like, wow, okay, I'm not alone. Good. You know, mm-hmm. and they can mm-hmm. come out and they can start sharing. And, you know, you, you've, you know, as, as a result, you know, the chain reaction in your life, what I've seen just from, you know, watching, watching your show and, and such that you, this is the chain reaction that you've caused of like, not only, counseling people but also like showing them that there is a community that that you're mm-hmm. not alone mm-hmm. definitely it's it's been like that since the very beginning that the first time i went on tv was 2009 and it's now 2017 and yeah um 
people constantly contact me from around the world and they'll say they've been through the same type of thing. They felt quite alone because they had no one really to talk to about it. Um, and definitely I have um, encouraged them that, you know, there's many of us who have been through this and, and Jesus will help them through this. And really also to encourage them to speak out and begin to share their story with others. And many of them have, and, and some of them have went on to, um, you know, write articles about it or even um, do TV, radio shows or even their own radio show now, which I just love that because I feel there's a lack of, of us out there sharing such a story. So I love to encourage as many people as I can um, to do that. And um, yeah, often they, they will come back later and say just what you've said, Willie. They feel it's a chain reaction in their own life. They're now meeting other people that they're helping um, to find Jesus and to be set free and to just continue that um, story of, of salvation and deliverance. So it's such an honor. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It really is. And uh, it's been very educational for me hearing these people and, you know, hearing other, other stories, uh, you know, because there there is so much danger in the occult. And it's it's enticing because, it you know, it's like, oh, cool, you know, like, you know, you see it in the movies, like, oh, this isn't just a, you know, this isn't just fictional, it's real. Well, like, you know, yeah, but that's not something to be excited about, you know, as... Mm-hmm. As you're, you know, as you're going to share, like it's not, it's not exciting. <laughs> but one, one question before, before uh, you, you start with your testimony. So there is a, there is a, a running, a running uh, a joke with my, my ministry partner Jim Harold. Um, you know, you, I've, I'm sure you, you may have heard about the the no true Scotsman fallacy. Uh, where, you know, it's the, the the phrase of like, oh, no true Scotsman puts sugar in his porridge. So, so right now, you know, being you know, being that you're from Scotland, you know, you're, you're about as genuine as I can, I can find of anybody I know. Um, so the question is, do you put sugar in your porridge? Well, I buy the porridge that comes in little packets that you just need to pop into the microwave. And yeah, they tend to have sugar in them. (laughs) Ah, okay. Well, there you have it, folks. Even a true Scotsman puts sugar in their porridge. But saying that, my grandparents, um, they didn't put sugar in their porridge. They would always put salt in their porridge. Oh, dear. Now now yeah. the, case, the case is opened back up again. I, the world will never know. <laughs> okay, well, now that, now that we've cleared that up, we can, we can continue. That's, that's, been, uh, that's been bugging me and my partner for, for quite some time. So I'm glad to have you on the show, at least for that. And, you know, I did, for years I did have porridge uh, religiously every morning, and then I just got fed up with it and decided, oh, I'm just eating cornflakes now. So, oh, dear. There you go. Yeah. So, so what's that, the uh, the lazy Scotsman fallacy? It must be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, now you've you have thoroughly confused me and my my partner. I'm sure I'm sure Jim is listening to this at the moment and and laughing his head off. <laughs> and I don't know any Scottish person who wears a kilt or who even owns a kilt. So there you go. Oh wow, um, I think if anything, we might have to have a separate episode of what makes a Scotsman a Scotsman. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so so you originally uh, when you were younger were. So you were caught up in the the New Age spiritualism. So what what got you into that in the first place? Um, I suppose, you know, to take it even further back, I, I guess really um, we can look at the culture um, for why people get into these things. Because certainly as a, as a child, I was interested in anything supernatural that might be on the TV, you know, whether that would be... Um, watching TV programs about spirits, about ghosts, aliens, um, you know, and then even even children's books or books for very young children would often, would often have a ghost type theme. So anything like that interested me, hearing anything about people who had psychic powers, um, any of that type of thing was something that genuinely interested me and I would say that even Halloween fed that because each Halloween of course um, that theme would come up so that certainly added to to the intrigue of these things and then of course the whole question of is there life after death can 
dead people contact us. Um, to me, was just fascinating that my mother had um, been fascinated by it too her whole life, and she had had psychic experiences um, since she was younger, like myself, but she didn't pursue it until later. It was probably about the time I was in probably second or third year at, at high school, so I was about 11, 12, 13. She, um, she was actually approached by a medium in the park when she was walking the dogs, and the medium, he didn't know her, but he could... Uh, see that that she had this potential too so he invited her to this spiritualist church that he was a member of in Glasgow and she went along and um, not long after that I started to go too and and she went along and obviously they um, they knew that that she had these uh, abilities where she could contact spirits uh, and spirit guides and so on. So they wanted to um, help her develop that. And two of the kind of main main ways they would encourage this would be to start going to meditation classes and also to start going to yoga classes because what a lot of folks don't realise, although meditation and yoga nowadays is so common and, and even your local doctor will recommend it, um, for stress relief and so on. Uh, yoga and meditation are, are not divorced from spirituality. Um, they do actually have uh, spiritual powers behind them. And, um, you know, we were encouraged to do it because doing yoga and meditation would attune you to the spirit realm. It would help to open your chakras, open your third eye and um, develop powers of clairvoyance in you um so there you go it's not something that's just um you know a healthy exercise to do or or something to to relax the mind these things are encouraged by those who know how to contact spirits so um we did that and we, we went along there we got really fascinated and interested in it and of course all the the types of things that would go along with that um we would get into crystal healing we would get into really when you go along to somewhere like that um there's a whole community and a whole host of activities and um things that open up to you of a spiritual nature and eventually you just end up getting into all of it so you know we would go to New Age centres, psychic fairs, we would go to um, alternative therapy centres, even uh, a health food shop, you would go there and, and always find people there who were into these types of esoteric practices. Um, so we got more and more into it and really, you know, we believed that yes, there is life after death, yes, uh, we can contact dead relatives uh, and also um, spirit guides or ascended masters um, which are like angels Um, we can contact aliens from other planets other universes, other time dimensions these were um, beliefs that we held very strongly and of course because this could be proven or we thought was proof, then we would believe it. And if someone told us we were imagining it, you know, we would totally disregard that because we knew this phenomena was real. Um, so it, it definitely wasn't um, make-believe. We totally, totally believed in it. We went to what were known as transfiguration sessions at the spiritualist church or spiritualist meetings. And that's where... Um, I don't. I haven't saw this so much nowadays happen. Um, maybe it does, but not to the same extent. Back then, when we went to the transfiguration sessions, that would be where the medium would go into complete trance, total trance, to the extent where she would not know what she was saying or what she was doing, and she would go into this um, state where she would allow the entities to come through, channel through her body, to such an extent that her face would actually change 
um, her, her the form of her body would change, and you would literally see, um, you know, a so-called old man, the grandfather of someone in the meeting, or somebody who would transpose their whole image over her, and they would begin to speak. They would give a message. Sometimes they would even get up and come out of the woman and start to walk about the congregation and give messages. Um, that it was considered dangerous because the medium could, um, she could suffer f- from that physically. She could even die um, if anybody was to touch her whilst in this trance state. And it's not something I hear spoken about much these days, but I'm sure it will still uh, happen. Um, so, you know, again, all of this was very, very real, very, very powerful stuff. So we had no reason to believe there was any falsehood in it whatsoever. And if people did say to us something like, oh, well, you're just um, talking to evil spirits that are masquerading as dead people, we would not believe that because to us that would just be ridiculous, um, a ridiculous um you know, explanation, and we would just wouldn't believe it. In fact, we would be quite hurt and quite insulted if someone was to say that. So, really, um, and we were into astrology and reading our horoscopes and anything really, and any kind of alternative healing modality that was offered, anything where, um, you know, therapists would speak of, cleansing your auras or um, dealing with energies in your body. Of course, nowadays, Reiki is very popular. Mm. Yeah, yeah so, I've heard about, like, Dr. Oz's wife like became, like, a Reiki healer and then got a malpractice suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about that. But, but, you know, basically where people are talking about being healers, the question is what is the source of their powers? Um you know, the, the person might feel like we did, that it's completely harmless and it's beautiful and it's these wonderful energies from these spirits or these healing guides. Um, and it works. Of course it works. But um, I would say question the source of these spirits and I'll go into that in more detail. So basically um, what happened was we, we continued to do this and my mother was developing it as a medium. The spirits were coming through, contacting her regularly and I certainly wanted to uh, become a medium too. I would go with her to the development classes but we would often hear reports from people who everything would be okay at first but then gradually um, they would start to have problems that they, they could no longer control when the spirits came through to them that sometimes the spirits would turn on them, sometimes they would be obnoxious and so on. And that, you know, sometimes the, the, the person would get free from it, but often they couldn't. We heard that it, it led to some people even uh, becoming violent because the spirits would take them over, some people ending up in psychiatric wards, psychiatric hospitals. So we knew of this, and everybody else in the spiritless church we went to knew of this too, but there would be different reasons that would be given to try to explain that, you know, such as, well, it is a potential hazard of the job. You are dealing with the spirit world after all. Sometimes you will get these obnoxious spirits that can come through. Um, or they would say, well, maybe you're working on quite low vibrations yourself. So like attracts like and, and you're just you've attracted these low level spirits to you Um you know, there could be a host of, of different reasons given for why this, this had happened. And, of course, we would accept those explanations because they sounded perfectly valid. Um, and I guess the, the you, you would just feel, well, I'll probably be protected. And even if something bad does happen, all my medium friends here um, will help and, and it will be fine. So you would just keep you would just keep on with the activities. Um, but then things started to go wrong with with us and the spirits would sometimes be obnoxious and sometimes even be abusive and violent. So, again, at first we, we would think, well, it's just th- these spirits happen to be obnoxious 
and that's what can happen. But what happened was it was things were getting really bad. They were getting worse and worse. The actual so-called spirit guides, the actual so-called, you know, good spirits would come through my mother and put her into a trance even when she wasn't meditating, even when she wasn't trying to contact them. They would just decide to come through and take over her. Um, but they were doing it in such a way as to make her in a dangerous situation. For example, um, one time she was cooking in the kitchen when they did this and when she came out of trance, the whole kitchen was consumed by fire. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, was, you know, obviously she could have been killed. Our cats and dogs could have been killed. Things like that were happening. Um, she, I was with her a couple of times when we were out shopping down at the mall and she would literally be picked up from the, the sidewalk and thrown onto the road and land on the bonnet of a passing car. You know, and obviously if you were to see that happening, it would look pretty bizarre and people might say, well, that's poltergeist activity, whatever, however you want to describe it. But these types of things were happening. So, um, and obviously, you know, our, our, our friends, the other mediums and psychics and channelers who were all lovely people and, you know, we loved them and um, they tried to help us, but they couldn't get us free from this. Um, and I think what was perplexing to us, the, the most perplexing thing was even our so-called dead relatives turned against us. So, whereas in the past, when I used to have visitations from my so-called dead gran and my so-called dead sister, because my mother had had a miscarriage when she was pregnant, you know, this dead sister would appear and gently stroke my hair, and it was always a very comforting um, type of experience. But now, um, these so-called dead relatives were turning up and trying to choke me, they were trying to strangle me, they were, um, I would experience what doctors call sleep paralysis. Hmm. Um, and my mother was going through the same. So, again, this perplexed us because we thought there's something not right here. There's something not quite right about spiritualism after all because these spirits that have been coming through to us, it was our medium friends who brought them through to us in the first place. It, it was the, you know, the, the head mediums, the, the top mediums at the church who channeled these uh, spirit relatives through to us. Why did they not know that these were actually evil spirits impersonating our dead family? And that was a con that was a confusing thing for us. Um, but I think it is a very very key point, and it will become more apparent as as we go on. So. Really, it was getting worse and worse. My mother was being attacked. I was too, but she was being attacked more. And um, she went to her doctor and asked for sleeping pills because they were now coming through her day and night and she could hardly get any sleep. Hmm. And, of course, when she explained to the doctor, I'm a medium and these spirits are keeping me up at night, the doctor just said... There's no such thing as spirits, and um, if you're hearing voices um, and, you know, having a fire in your house, etc., and having these dangerous dangerous um, things happening to you, you're a danger to yourself and others. And, uh, you know, she was classed as, as schizophrenic and diagnosed as schizophrenic, and the doctor admitted her to a psychiatric hospital. Hmm. And, you know, sadly, I hear from people all the time who, who are in the exact same position or who have been in that position or who have been in psychiatric hospitals more than once because of this very reason. It's very, very common, uh, sad to say. So that was very traumatic, obviously, my mother being in there, especially because I knew... You couldn't just pin this all down to mental illness. I knew that the phenomena that occurred in the in the home, um, 
and I knew that it wasn't just hallucinations or, or, or mental illness. Granted, her mind had become very badly affected by it all, of, of course, hmm. um, but I knew that these were real spiritual entities involved, but obviously there was nothing I could do about that. Um, so, uh, right about this time, I was in um, second year at, at university and I met a Christian and she became friendly with me and I told her what was going on. So she said, well, you know, Jesus could set you free from this and set your mum free. But, you know, as a, a new age type of person, as a spiritualist, I just believed Jesus was perhaps an ascended master. He was one of many saviours um, that he was not. The, the son of God, he was not the saviour I didn't believe what the Bible said about him, so to me that was just like oh, that's not going to work um, but she kept inviting me and inviting me and eventually um, she said she invited me again and, and by now she, she was so nice and, and, and I just didn't want to keep saying no to her so I thought okay I'll go along but I really don't believe in any of it but, but you know I'll go anyway so it was about East, it was Easter time actually. So I went along, and um, in actual fact, I was very intrigued. Um, they were the Christians there. Just I, I felt there was a presence there that I hadn't known before. So that really intrigued me. And um, the, some of them were speaking in tongues. That really intrigued me because I thought, wow, there's something supernatural happening here. Why is that? You know what's going on, and been interested in spiritual things and supernatural things that did uh, interest me so basically um, that night I went home and um, my husband was working in the hospital he was night shift that night and I went home and I realised you know maybe I should think about Jesus maybe he could help and funnily enough Earlier that day, I had been going through the house and just sorting things out for a charity shop. And at the top of the bag, ready to go, was a Bible. Huh. And, I, and I thought, wow, the Bible caught my eye as soon as I walked in the door. So I thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't give that to a charity shop. And um, so I took the Bible and I prayed. And I basically said, you know, to God... If you are real and and if this is true that Jesus Christ is the Savior, um, please please show me and please show me what to do with this situation with myself and my mother and these spirit attacks. So I, I basically flicked the Bible open and um, it fell open at a verse that basically was saying, you know that 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 you are in a false religion. So I got quite a shock at that. Um, but that was the, the start of of my turnaround. And, and a, a, probably about a day or two later, it was quite quickly after that, um, I couldn't get the image of a traveller out of my head. She called herself a Roman gypsy. She was psychic. She um, was a medium and she used to go around the, the neighbourhood about once a year selling charms and the like and I just couldn't get her out of my head so I thought why why do I want to see her she um she's not going to believe in Jesus she'll tell me not to go back there well the very next day the doorbell rang and it was her and she said the first thing she said was Jesus has sent me to you today um I'm no longer psychic I have become born again and um, you know the place you were you were at recently is, is everything you, you've been taught there is true. So I was absolutely wow amazed wow, because yeah. that was not that was the last thing I thought she would say. But for me, I think it was confirmation that that one that I needed that I was on the right path at last. So so yeah, I um I went back to my friends. Christian church and basically I gave, I did give my life to Jesus. I realised that, that he um, was the son of God. He was the saviour. Everything just seemed to make sense. 
and fall into place. And I asked him to become my saviour. I asked him to forgive me and to cleanse me from um, the the practices that, that I had been involved in. Now, my mother, of course, was still in the psychiatric hospital and I would go and visit her and she was allowed a visit at the weekend to to leave the hospital. So I would bring her to church. Now, at first she didn't like it because even although she had withdrawn from spiritualism, she was still being attacked by these spirits. She still believed in all of that stuff. She didn't believe Jesus was the saviour. And she kind of felt like I, I was a traitor, as it were. Hmm. But but she came just because it was somewhere to go and because everyone was so nice to her. So we would go along there and eventually she also asked Jesus into her heart, which was wonderful. Um, she started to make progress and um, the, the doctors felt that she was a lot better so they released her to go back home but this is very tragic and again it's common um, although people might not hear about it because people tend to if this happens in their family they tend to keep it secret but basically when she went back home those spirits were still in the house so they just went back to attacking her again and because I was a, a baby Christian, the, the church I had just newly joined, um, you know, they were born again Christians. Yes, they did believe the Bible, but they didn't actually think a Christian could still be um, tormented by demons. They just assumed, well, Laura's mother is born again now, so there shouldn't be any demons in her house. You know, they should have automatically just left. Uh, Therefore, she probably is just mentally ill. And I didn't know there was such a thing as the deliverance ministry. Um, Okay, I probably heard of of so-called exorcists when I was younger, but I I didn't really know that, that this was available to us. So we were at a loss. Um, And eventually... Um, also that you know things were getting so bad with my mother that she actually killed herself oh. yeah um, and again this is something that I hear c- constantly from people worldwide who will say they're in, they're in the, they've been in the same position they almost killed themselves or they feel like killing themselves right now um, even a few days ago a woman wrote to me describing to me the same type of things my mother went through And she said, basically, you know, she's had enough. She'd wanted to kill herself. And I hear her this time and time again. To me, that really emphasizes the the need, Christian churches, to basically, you know, wake up. In the Bible, Jesus and the disciples cast demons out of people. You know, in Acts 16, we had the the fortune-telling girl, you know, the young woman with the spirit of divination. Mm -hmm. You know, they cast a demon out of her. People need deliverance, and once they have that deliverance, these spirits leave them, their house is free again, the person is free again, back in their sane mind, and they're totally set free. So the deliverance ministry is very, very crucial, very, very important, Um, and I find it heartbreaking that not not every church um, is doing this or seems to have unbelief where that's concerned. Yeah, because my experience with the matter... um I have had very limited, personally, I've had very limited um, dealings with demonized people. Very fortunate to have very limited dealings, but I can I can definitely see um, why churches, like one one thing I've 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 heard churches talk about, like pastors, they'll say like, you know, just like what what you were talking about with your church, like oh it should just happen already. <laughs> it's like well you you know you you brought Jesus into your home, like why didn't everybody just leave and you know mm-hmm. but. You know, like the the fact that your mother was entrenched in in these these practices, it's something that like was so pervasive in her household that you know, I mean, everybody everybody even after being born again, they have something that they still struggle with after they're born again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there are things exactly. that are there yeah. are immediate there are immediate changes that happen, but not everything is immediate. You know, mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I mean, it's it definitely sounds common. I mean, uh, just not something that you would expect to hear as far as being continuing to be tormented by demons. Usually, people are still tormented by addictions or mm-hmm. tormented by you know certain lifestyle issues, so on and so forth. But it's 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 great that you're you're bringing this to light because yeah, you're you're absolutely right that there 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 is a need for at, at the very least like an awareness of of deliverance. You know, um, you know, meaning like, you know, cause, cause it, it's not something you can just do overnight no. you know, to learn how to do it. It requires training. Just like, mm-hmm. just like how you and I talked about with, with the evangelism show, like, yes, it is possible to do it without training, but really it's best to be trained to Absolutely. handle situations, especially when things are particularly challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone just go and try it. Um, uh, you know, I believe that casting out of demons is, is, a, is a gift similar to, for example, the gift of, of healing. Um, not all Christians can heal the sick, um, even though Jesus told us to and he wants us to. If they haven't received that gift yet, then, you know, they can try it all they like and it won't happen. That You have to know that, that you have received that gift um, from God before you uh, go into it. And usually it's just because people start to get healed around you or demons start to come out um, when you're in the room that you begin to, it confirms to you that yes, Jesus has gave you that gift, but I certainly wouldn't rush into to trying it, as you say. Um, but yeah, there, there, there is a lack in the church worldwide. Um, and, and it is sad because Christians are suffering the same torments they had before they were saved because these issues are not being properly dealt with. Um, yeah, so that's something that is really close to my heart because so many people, they've been saved for years and yet they're still going through the same attacks and they're frightened to tell their pastor or other people in their church because they won't believe them. Um, and it is really, it is quite sad. So that's why I think it's important that, that you know we do share that message that, Jesus wants people set free from these things. He wants these uh, demons gone from their life. And, you know, if there's someone listening that will say, well, what do you mean demons? I thought you were talking about ghosts. Well, yes, you know, what we came to experience showed that these were not ghosts after all. Even though these entities appeared they may have looked like our dead relatives. They may have spoken like them, used the same voice, given a whole lot of information that would seem to confirm, yeah, that really is my dead grandfather. That in actual fact, they weren't because they began to attack us. They began to get physical, violent, and so did the spirit guides and so on. And in each of these cases, whether it was myself or, or any other people I've met who have been through this, when you confront these entities with the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you say to that entity, show yourself in Jesus' name, um, tell that spirit that you know about the blood of Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for our sins, that spirit will change its tune and it will become quite obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, there is the 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 answer. Sometimes they will even scream uh, and leave. People have told me they've saw me on TV uh, describe this. I've I've had people contact me from worldwide mediums, even who have said I did what you suggested, Laura. The next time my spirit guide showed up or my dead uncle showed up, I challenged it in the name of Jesus Christ to show its true identity. And it shape-shifted in front of my very eyes and I saw the human face melt away and this horrible, you know, demonic face come through showing its true identity. Um, so, you know, people say, well, sometimes people say to me, well, where where are my, okay, I can understand that. Demons um, can shape-shift and change their identity and pretend to be your dead family. So sometimes people will say to me, well, where is my dead family then? Because I would still like to contact them. How do you know if it's a a real ghost or a demon? And I have to explain to them, well, the fact is, um, 
ghosts cannot come back and contact us. There's loads of TV programs about ghost hunting. They're every culture Mm -hmm. and every age, um, down the ages. You know, every culture have tried to communicate with the dead and have been what they thought was successful. But actually, they can't. You know, the Bible shows us that when we die, um, we, we die once and then the judgment. You know, the Bible talks about heaven and hell. It does not talk about people coming back to earth. There is nowhere in the Bible that talks about earthbound spirits or trapped human spirits. There is nowhere in the Bible that says if you had an untimely death or a traumatic death, um, you might get trapped on earth uh, or that some people die and they can't find the light so they get stuck on earth. There is nothing in the Bible that suggests ghosts can roam around. Um, and again, so, you know, the, the, that's kind of like answering it on two veins. One, people cannot actually come back. And two, any spirit entity that appears to you, challenge it with these truths about Jesus Christ. Challenge it about him being the saviour, dying on the cross for our sins, about the blood of Jesus, and you will see their reaction. They might pretend to be your dead grandfather or a spirit guide. and a, They might pretend to be a fairy, a unicorn, what they are pretending to be, they always react the same way to this test. I have never, ever, as soon as I came to the truth, as soon as I came to Jesus, and I again, nothing like that. Um, and any time I, I maybe have to go to a house where a person says their house is haunted, myself or colleagues that I know of, some people that I know have been in the deliverance ministry for 30 years will tell me, Every single time they go to help someone, it always shows itself as a demon. There has not been one time where it really has been truly a ghost. Yeah, um, when you when you talk about like challenging the spirits, uh, one Bible verse passage that comes to mind is First mm-hmm. John four, one and two. Uh, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses as Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And that's, that's, you know, definitely a good, you know, that's something Mm -hmm. to, to keep on hand, especially if you're dealing with, you know, people, like if you have people in your life, you know, like what you're saying, people contacting you, you know, that's something to, to, to tell them, yeah, you know, First John four one, don't believe everything that comes your way. Definitely, and and you know, I mean, even Christians um, who have got mixed up in this uh, as well need to test it because many of them have been deceived by it. And remember, you know, the devil, demons will try to deceive you. Um, they will try to tempt us with things, and. Um, so it doesn't matter whether the person's a Christian or not, they've still got to use that test. The, you know, the, the scriptures do say um, test prophecies. You know, back in the book of Acts in the New Testament, when the disciples, um, many of them had the gift of prophecy, they still had to test that prophecy, even though they knew each other was a born-again apostle. They still had to test it to make sure it was of the Lord, even though they were following the Lord. So it doesn't matter if someone's a believer or not. They could still be deceived. And I have um, known of of believers who have maybe had this in their past. And once they've got born again, they just haven't realized that this ghost is really a demon. So they've kept on talking to it. Hmm. And, you know, the demon's not going to leave just because you get born again. It needs cast out. Um, And if you continue to talk to it, it will continue to answer back as if it is that (laughs) dead relative. You know, I've had people tell me um, they were doing witchcraft or they were were still astral projecting or any of these things because they simply just didn't know this was in the realm of the occult. And again, I would say to the person, okay, next time um, your body wants to astral project, um, challenge that experience in the name of Jesus Christ and see what happens. You know, when they've got back to me and said, yeah, you're right, I now know that it's demonic because of what happened to me when I stopped it in Jesus' name. So I've known of of Christians in in ministry who, 
even felt that they, yes, they were casting demons out of people and homes, and uh, I believe they truly were, um, but they also felt on occasion they sometimes were encountering ghosts, and they sometimes would help those ghosts onto the light. So, you know, I, I very uh, gently and lovingly said to them, please, please test this out, because that's not really what the Bible shows, and I explained my testimony, and I said, you know, next time you think you've met a ghost, try this, test it, in Jesus' name, um, and I have had people get back to me and say, that's right, I, I, I can't believe I have got deceived by that stuff, but it's right, um, and I'm never going to um, be fooled by these so-called ghosts again, and I've heard that people's whole ministry have changed because they've then stopped doing that. And In actual fact, they can be deliverance Christians who do that because they are, in a sense, using a form of necromancy, if you like, simply by acknowledging a demon as being a ghost when it's not. Hmm. And, you know, having conversations with a so-called ghost, sending it to the light and so on, you are, in a sense, um, communing with a demon by being deceived, thinking it's a ghost. So it, it's, uh, And, of course, nowadays it's, it's got even more popular than it used to be. Um, but not not just uh, spiritualism, as you know, witchcraft is, is more popular in Wicca and um, children are even being taught how to cast spells um, as if this is just a bit of fun or whatever. But, you know, it's not. It really does open doors. Um, and I think this society nowadays is definitely opening floodgates to the old cult and the new age. And sadly... A lot of the people involved in it don't even realise it's classed as New Age or occult. Um, they've been brought up with it. They just think it's a natural, supernatural, natural part of life. And they don't even realise um, that it is occult. Oftentimes I'll use that word and people will say to me, what's the occult? Even though I know by their own practices they're actually involved in it. They just they just don't even know it's the occult. They certainly wouldn't label themselves as a new ager, and yet they are actually doing those types of activities. Hmm. Yeah, that's something always definitely be very very careful about. Um, you know, when you keep when you keep mentioning like the ghosts asking to to be brought to the light, um, like something kind of for me it's it's a little it's almost kind of funny uh, when they ask to go to the light. I mean, you know, Jesus himself said, "I am the way, the truth, and the light." Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, I mean that it falls perfectly. You know, like, all right, ghost, you want to go to the light? Go to Jesus. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you know, of course, like they're gonna, you know, they know Jesus. You know, just like in uh, the book of Acts with the seven sons of Sceva, it's like Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. You know, so these demons, they know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so but when you bring them up, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, Jesus is the light. So you wanna, you know, you wanna find the light? Okay, yeah, go to Jesus. I'm not talking to you anymore. You know Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, that's another key about any of these, whether it's a so-called ghost, a so-called um, ascended master, um, whether it's even an angel or an entity that claims to be, you know, from the Buddhist religion, the Hindu, a Hindu god or goddess or any kind of mystical god or goddess. Again, the test is, what does it teach about Jesus? Because a common thread through all of these spiritualities will be that they will say Jesus Christ is not the saviour, that there's many ways to God. And that is the test as well. Because if, like us, you're born again and you know Jesus is the only way to God, you will see what their ultimate purpose is. The ultimate purpose for these um, so-called ghosts and so on appearing to people is to get the person really interested in that stuff. Yes, they could spend their whole life now talking to these so-called ghosts, um, you know, make a whole career out of it even. But the ultimate reason for it is to keep that person away from salvation in Jesus Christ so that that person believes anything else spiritually, any other gods and goddesses, any other... um, spirit guides, aliens, anything at all other than that Jesus Christ is the way to God and that we need him to forgive our sins. They will say anything but that. And again, 
how much of a contradiction, sorry, how much of a con- coincidence is that that all of these different kinds of spirits will say that one thing? They yeah. don't mind if the person believes in Hinduism, Buddhism, reincarnation, whatever. They don't mind what you believe in as long as it's not Jesus Christ is the only way. And there's been people who have been contacted by so-called aliens uh, or, or spirits that have told the person, if you want to grow in your spirituality, you have to renounce Jesus Christ uh, as being the saviour. <laughs> to actually tell someone that is very telling in itself. Yeah. You know, why Why not renounce Buddha? Why not renounce Hinduism? Why not? No, renounce Jesus Christ as your saviour. You know, it, it's almost, I imagine um, some satanic covens will say that when a person um, joins them. So, you know, I just think that in itself is quite telling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, like, even if they, even if they are okay with the name of Jesus, they're not mm-hmm. okay with who Jesus actually is. It's like, okay, yeah, Jesus, the Christ consciousness, or Jesus, mm-hmm. the messenger, Jesus, the prophet, not Jesus, the Messiah, you mm-hmm. know, and, and some, some cult groups will even call Jesus the son of God. But then they'll say that Lucifer was his brother. Yeah, exactly. You know, if the spirit says something like that to you, um, you know that it's a lie because that's not what the Bible is saying. And, and we know enough to know that the Bible is true. And um, there's enough proof. Apologetics, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people like yourself, there is enough proof, scientific proof, archaeological proof that the Bible is true and Jesus is who he actually said he is. Absolutely. And... um yeah, it's just it's a uh, it, it's a matter of being completely familiar with the authentic to be able to identify the counterfeit. And one thing I'm sure you and I both agree on is that even as you're born again, even uh, you know, even having the protection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we should never actively seek the occult, even to deal with it. But we should always be prepared when it comes our way. Would you agree with that? I mean. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest anyone rushes out and tries to to help witches or satanists if they find out there's a local coven somewhere. You know, you have to be wise. Like like anything, God gives each person their own um, calling, their own gift in life, and maybe that's not for you. Maybe God has another destiny for you. Um, so yeah, you do have to be careful. Yeah. But at the same time, we should also have an awareness that there are things. So, like, if something does come to you, you're prepared mm-hmm. for it. You know, like, if there is something that goes yeah. bump in the night and you don't have a cat, you know, mm-hmm. like, okay, mm-hmm. what's what's making this go around? You know, okay, I didn't bring this thing in here, but what is it? So, you know, there's definitely, I'm, I'm glad you've been on the show to uh, to bring this sort of thing to light. It's been so wonderful. Um we're we're just about just about out of time, um, so how can we contact you and where can we find uh, your your material? Yeah, I'm on Facebook and um, I have a blog, ourspiritualquest.com, and YouTube channel Laura Maxwell X Spiritists, and I do love to collect testimonies from people set free from these things, so you can check out many testimonies on there plus my own radio show, The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. And that's on Eternal Radio. Yeah, definitely excellent. For, for those of you listening, it's it, it, there is a lot of excellent stuff on there. I mean, you know, what Laura has shared with us today is, is kind of the tip of the iceberg of what her ministry has to offer in, uh, in this whole matter. Um, also, just one thing, because I... I <laughs> I'll tell you when I, I went to I went to find your blog, and I accidentally typed in your spiritual quest instead mm-hmm. of our spiritual quest, and it took me to a, a site that was trying to sell uh, Himalayan sea salt lamps. Yeah, so I'm I just saw that like, before. It's like okay, <laughs> what's she trying to do here? You know what? What is she trying to pull? Because we had just we had just met over Facebook, and yeah. so I was looking up the blog, and and I'm like, okay, yeah, she's just trying to sell sell me something. And then I, I looked again, <laughs> and it's our spiritual quest, not. Your spiritual quest. So, yeah. <laughs> very important. Very important. She is not trying to sell you Himalayan sea salt crystal no. lamps. And you know, I, I, I've never been paid for any TV or radio interview I've done. I've never been paid for any magazine article I've written 
of chapters for books. I've never been paid. I am not trying to get people's money. I'm just desperate. Um, my mother killed herself because of of these so-called spirits. Uh, you know, I just want people to find Jesus and be set free. And that's beautiful. That's so wonderful. Um, but and thank you, thank you so for, so much for being on this show. Uh, I, I do believe you've. I mean, you've certainly been a blessing for me in many ways. Uh, and, and I do believe everybody, I speak for everybody listening that you also can be a blessing for them as well. Uh, if you would just, if you'd like to pray for us and that, that can finish out the show. Well, and I thank you for, for your ministry too, Willie, because it's been a great blessing to me and, and my audience too. Yes, I would love to. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and for those who are listening. Holy Spirit, I pray that you touch their hearts and draw them to Jesus. Lord, let them be open to the truth. Holy Spirit, let them know that Jesus loves them so, so much. Father God, that you sent him to die on the cross for them. Father God, bring them to yourself and set them free from all falsehood. We thank you, Lord, you love them so much. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Laura. God bless. Thank you. God bless. So all of these all of these messages are available for download on iTunes. Just type in the ministry name, set the captives free, look for our logo, and um, if you would like a CD copy of this mailed to you, uh, just contact me at W Needham N E E D H A M at scfministry.com, and I will I will send one to you for a donation of any amount. Um, feel free to contact Set the Captives Free Ministries if you'd like to. If you'd like to send us anything, uh, you can call us at one eight five 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 zero seven zero three seven nine. And if you'd like to write to us, our address is P.O. Box four six seven, Modena, New York one two five four eight. Thank you all very much, and God bless.